Today on BCPOV, it's crunch time. Who's gonna take top spot? Me or Trevor? It's the final day of TransBC, a six day blind enduro race in Eastern BC. After day five, we took the bus back to Fernie where the final day will take place. Three of the four stages will be in the bike park today. So that means we get to take the lift up to the first stage, willpower. After that, it's back up the chairlift and a transfer out of the bike park to a trail called Verboten. Next, we have a big transfer to the other side of the bike park for stage three, an ultra gnar double black trail called TNT. For the final stage, we take Bike Thief, a new line that was used for the Canada Cup downhill race last year. A spicy way to end the race. As we take the chairlift up, let's check out the combined results from the last five days of racing. After a strong day yesterday, I was able to put 50 seconds into Trevor, closing the gap to just 12 seconds. James is about seven minutes back, and David's doing well in 25th place in the 40 to 49 men category. Now, since the battle with Trevor has become the main focus of these videos, this final one is gonna be a little different. On the day, we didn't find out who won until the after party. So to treat you to the same suspense that we experienced, I'll show you the stage results at the end of the video. So with that all explained, let's get to stage one, willpower. Trevor accidentally takes the left line here. Okay, first stage. Uh, last day. Almost going off the trail here. Going in, oh man, going in cold. Very nearly went over the bars there. Oh shit! Hey! <sighs> 
you're like the first person who waited the appropriate amount of time oh. to let me to let me get down. Oh no problem. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I saw oh. you guys hang me back and I was like, oh, thank you. No problem. That was rad. I think you were fast. You were great. Yeah, but you guys are really fast. <laughs> Anyways, I really appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. It's got to really take the fun out of it to get past all the time in a race like this. The racers are basically self-seated into three waves according to climbing speed. But it doesn't really take into account descending. For example, Adam the Privateer chose the slowest climbing group, but is one of the fastest guys out there. So it would be great to see this issue addressed in future years. If you're racing an enduro and getting past is an issue, I would suggest going near the end of the pack if you can. Finish, finish, right here, right here. Oh, I f***ed that up. I f***ed up a bunch of stuff too. I went like the far, really far way around. Oh, really? Probably lost a ton of time because oh. there was a straight line. Yeah, and I went like way switched back out like this. Oh, I think I got the straight line. There's two straight lines. Yeah. At the top, there's this up and over. And it kind of sends you off the trail. And I saw people going in there. Finish! 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 Don't you know about that straight line at the top? Yeah. Finish! Finish! Yeah. That's copy like seven seconds. I did the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what I took, but I, I took a more direct line because I did notice some sw I crossed the trail. Finish, finish, right here, right here, right here. Lost my lead on that. Yeah. You think so? Mm, yeah. That's, that's probably five seconds of extra time. Yeah, if you took that straight line, then that's, that's a huge battle. You got to fight back, Trevor? Sounds like Trevor had a few mistakes in that stage, but I did as well. But we won't know who's fastest till the party tonight. We just gotta keep riding as hard as we can. After another lift up and a transfer out of the bike park to Verboten, it's time for stage two. Lots of routes on this one. <laughs> All right, stage two. This section, it's best to stay high on the left. But the roots just push you down. This section as well. This is not the right route to go.
Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that one was pretty loose. Oh, I don't think I did really good. I was doing good, but I I crashed and hit the ground. Oh really? It was like really long straight away. Oh. And then there was a tiny like rut berm at the bottom. Oh sh and I just like went into it and it just like folded over sideways. Oh. I uh I messed up the, the start because all those roots they're pushing you down. I got sucked down. Yeah. How was that? That was fine. Yeah? That was alright. I was almost like flipped off the side of the trail. Oh. Fine. The, the top, the roots at the top, they just push you down. Oh. I even heard a guy say you should stay left there and I didn't do it. How was that, David? Uh, it's like fast. Oh no. Oh. You alright? I went over the bars to get on those the roots. Oh, at the top there? Yeah. Oh, those roots are tough. I'm doing pretty good. I thought I'd keep the damn sight and I'm like, okay, that's it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the roots at the top definitely got me, so I wasn't very efficient here. And it sounds like Trevor had the same issue. But on top of that, Trevor crashed. Huh, maybe things are looking up for me? Well, there's still two stages left, and they're both pretty gnarly. After another big transfer into the bike park, we're on stage three. TNT. They're warning us that it's the gnarliest trail in the race. Is it even worse than Punisher on day one? Well, there's no big moves on it. It's just a lot of steep, awkward, hard to read trail. Me too. The hardest parts of this trail are the bits that cross the ski slopes. It's so gnarly. It's just so hard to commit to this stuff when you're riding blind. It looks tame on camera, but I assure you it's not.
lower part of TNT is really fun though. I'm much more comfortable on this. Right her up. Thank you. Nice boys. Yeah. And on. Full blown adult. Who's that? A little scary. I'll walk some of it. Yeah, I have one. There was one I had to get off. Could have rode it. It was like a off camber, yeah. polished rock. I'm like, eh, that could go bad. You know, I think I've ridden it before, but like when you're racing it, you, don't, you have to process it when you're just, just riding around. Yeah, okay. Yeah, or you stop and you look, you know. <sighs> it was like after the first little bit, then there was a straight section. Yeah. And there was two down arrows. Yeah. That section I was very out of control. Oh yeah, I, I think I put a foot down there. How was that? Yeah. Wasn't the hardest thing on the summer. Did you ride it all? Uh, I ride it all. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I like oh, that. I walked some of it. Trevor walked some of it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 I put my foot down on the first steep bit, like put a foot out. Yeah. yeah. I never got off the bike. So insane. I, 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 I so turned good. off my race brain. Yeah. I rode my bike. Huh. Guys, probably still beating me walking it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. The last stage is on a trail called Bicycle Thief. It starts out on last year's Canada Cup downhill course. It's gonna be steep. Unfortunately, I had a technical issue with my helmet cam. The GoPro locked up, so that means the sound isn't going to be great for this stage, and the chest cam won't quite capture the steepness. Hopefully it's still watchable, sorry about that. Though it's way steeper than the previous stage, it's easier. Big catch berms. In fact, I had a ton of fun on this. Check out the telemetry. It's basically 50% the whole time. Oh. Okay, it just went to 0% there, but you'll have to trust me, it was pretty darn steep. Check out all that dirt kicking up. I actually rode this trail the summer before in ultra dry conditions. Much easier now with all that moisture in the trail.
And that's the end of the steep stuff. The next trail is called Cripple Creek. Right her up. Right her up. Thank you. And the last trail is Rumpel Stumpskin. Right there. Well, it was a bad stage to be a YouTuber on. Damn gimbal. We're near the end though. <laughs> yeah. Okay, where's the beer? Race over, go home. Yeah. Ah, should grab one. Printer? No printer? Nope. Oh. I'm getting your results today. Yeah, exactly. It's all a surprise. Okay. So as you heard there, they didn't give us our results when we checked in. We'll have to wait till dinner tonight. In the meantime, Trevor and I did some laps in the bike park. After dinner and awards, they released the results online. We've had a few drinks at this point. Okay, horizontal. Horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Eric. Recording. This. Uh, you I think you so. The time? This is Eric. This is Eric right here, and that's uh, Trevor. <laughs> and they think they both won. So. <laughs> uh, I don't think I won. I'm, I'm not so sure. It was okay, in third place. You guys <laughs> look at these place. dogs. Look at these dogs. Look. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, buddy. Way more interesting. Sorry. Okay, this is Eric. This is Trevor. <laughs> it's gonna be like two hours of something. My arms get tired, David. Come on. I wanna go play with those dogs. <laughs> the suspense is killing me! I'm dying! <laughs> this confusion is brought to you by beer! <laughs> <laughs> this cutter is brought to you by B Trevor May! Trevor May wins it! Hey! Yeah, beer! Yeah, Trevor May! <laughs> oh, it's awesome! Good job, buddy! So Trevor took it, but how did that happen? Well, let's look at the results stage by stage. I did all right on stage one. Trevor took the long way around at the top, and I was able to get him by five seconds. On stage two, Trevor had that crash, so I was able to get him by 10 seconds here. So after two stages, I was leading by 15 seconds. 
In fact, at this point I'm leading the race overall by 3 seconds, since Trevor had a 12 second lead before the day started. This is the only time I ever led the race, with the exception of the very first stage on day 1. But the third stage on TNT is where I lost the race. Walking down those sections was definitely slow and Trevor got me by 24 seconds there. Stage 4, things weren't as bad, but Trevor still got me by 5 seconds. He's just better on the steep stuff. So after the day was done, Trevor got me by 14 seconds total. James is a minute 31 back and David's coming in at 25 minutes even. So with all the days combined, Trevor wins the race within the race. He's got 26 seconds on me, James is 8.25 back, and David got to ride an extra half hour more. It's pretty cool to see how close Trevor and I were after 3 hours of racing. On another note, some of you might know that there were other YouTubers racing. And some of you were wondering how they did. Well, they're all faster than me. So first off, Scott Countryman, uh, not a YouTuber, took the top spot. A very quick dude, he won the majority of the stages. Zach and Dane, the brothers from Trail Peak, were not far behind in 8th place. Amazingly, they somehow tied at 7 minutes behind the leader. Nate Hills took 18th spot at about 12 minutes back. Alex Chamberlain was close by at 19th, about 40 seconds behind Nate. Adam Price, the privateer from the Pink Bike series, is about 15 minutes back in 24th place. One thing to note is that he really likes to take his time on the climbs and he was doing a lot of passing on the stages. And me? I'm the slowest of the YouTubers, 52nd place and almost 40 minutes back. So does that mean Zach and Dane from Trail Peak are the fastest YouTubers? Well, I've ridden with Skills with Phil and he certainly would make things interesting. Maybe we can see that race one day. So what did I think of the race? Well, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Blind racing is definitely a different beast and it certainly changes the experience. I enjoyed all the stages, except for maybe stage 1 day 1, but that might have been the mental shock of racing blind. Those damn janky ass corners. Also a few things on some of the stages were above my pay grade when raced blind, but I think the biggest reason I enjoyed it so much is because I could share the experience with my friends. There were a few negatives though, for example the race organization is fairly loose, whereas BC bike race is run like a clock. There were definitely a few hiccups with Trans BC, like taking the wrong turn due to some confusing course marking, or not knowing where to meet due to some communication issues. The race also had a distinct bro vibe that a minority of racers and volunteers forced onto others. But overall, a great experience, and I'd be keen to try more Trans Enduro races in the future. But as always, thanks for watching, and stay gnarly.